Ever wondered what language they speak in space? Yeah, I'm talking about astronauts, not aliens. See, I wanted to know the answer, and so I wrote a letter to NASA, and I said, NASA, can I please interview an astronaut? I couldn't believe that NASA actually answered me, but they did. It was on NASA letterheaded paper and all that. But they wouldn't tell me anything or give me an astronaut. So I pieced together everything I could, and all I can say is... Sorry, NASA, we are pretty good at language sleuthing over here. Turns out the first language us mortals ever heard from space was not Klingon, it was something else. And if you want to leave the planet, you're going to have to learn this language too. Ну, мне кажется, что европейских космонавтов, которые говорят по-русски и по-английски, для русский, для русский, русского языка и тоже для английского языка, so вначале это очень трудно. If you haven't guessed yet, well, astronauts have to learn Russian before they are allowed to zoom up to the International Space Station, and I mean all of them. All of the training that takes place in Russia takes place in Russian, and of course we have Russian crewmates that we have to be able to speak with. До свидания, увидимся на борту станции. For me, probably the biggest challenge is the Russian language. Um, it's been a challenge for me <laughs> learning the language. Um, hopefully, I've, I've learned it to a point where I can be an efficient and effective crew member and do all the roles that, that I need to do. And if they make it through like these guys did, they might get to fly to the International Space Station. How's that for some language motivation? But is it just Russian or must they learn different languages? At a minimum, we have to know English and Russian on the uh, space station. Uh, but we also train in Japan, in Germany, uh, in Canada. We, we, we go all over the world for our training. And, and more importantly uh, than just the languages, you have to understand the culture. Um, so that we can work better as a team, both uh, with our ground team and our team here on the space station. Why are these language skills and culture skills so important? The world is getting smaller and you have to be more worldly. You have to uh, work on your language skills in order to find your place in it. Well, I agree. And that's exactly what us story learners are doing. But our world isn't getting smaller, it's getting bigger. And if you want to watch it grow, you should click these three buttons right here. Three, two, one. If I notice within, within 15 seconds of getting to orbit that we haven't had separation, then I reach up, throw that switch, push these up, and push these, to you, these two guys here. Otherwise, um, uh, we may not survive. Trouble is, of course, all these buttons that can save your life are written in Russian. So for Hatfield, mastering the language became one of the main challenges. Сейчас я говорю по-русски, поэтому нужно говорить по-русски. Мы знаем, это, это русский корабль, это не английский, это не французский корабль. Это наши профессоры, наши учебники, все только по-русски. Но, вы знаете, я не, не говорю по-русски, я говорю по союзу. The International Space Station is basically a research station in space that was launched over 20 years ago by Russia and the US. And ever since then, it's been essential for every visiting astronaut, cosmonaut or space tourist to know Russian. But they also have to speak English very well. The Russians too, because the official working language on the space station is English. Okay, so is Russian really necessary? Yep, for actually getting to space. Because no, they don't just sit in the rocket and have fun G-force rides. Proof coming up later. But even on the International Space Station, speaking each other's languages is not just about getting along. It's a high stakes situation. Some parts of the ISS have Russian modules and operations, and astronauts might have to interact with Russian mission control, especially if they're with a crew that's staying for long. Even the procedure books have facing pages in Russian and English. Do you want to see inside? Of course you do. Можно? Снимаем. Чуть-чуть. So here we are in the heart of the space station, really. This is the service module. So has uh, great windows right down toward Earth. It has uh, controls to fly in uh, visiting spacecraft if they need uh, some assistance right here. It has Russian computers as well as American computers to help us control anything we need to on the space station. Currently, the only way that astronauts and cosmonauts can get up there is on board a Soyuz capsule, which is launched by a Soyuz rocket. These were designed by the Russians in the 1960s, though they have been updated quite a bit since then. If you sit inside the Soyuz, the first thing you'll notice is that everything is in Russian, the whole control and navigation system. Not exactly surprising, it is a Russian spacecraft, and communication will be with mission control in Moscow. 
so obviously astronauts have to get pretty good at speaking the language. And then, of course, there's a control panel, and that's where we do most of our actions and work right here. There's hand controllers, which you can fly the vehicle with, and there's a stick right here, primarily used for communications uh, when we're trying to talk to the ground. It is serious business, guys. Launching is extremely stressful and there might be all kinds of emergencies, so communication has to be effortless. And don't think that re-entry into the atmosphere is any better. The capsule is about to enter the Earth's atmosphere. This will be the most stressful part of its journey home. It felt like there was somebody outside the, the spacecraft with a sledgehammer that was hammering here and there, up and down. And so every few uh, milliseconds, the spacecraft was shaking with this uh, bang, 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 bang. It felt really interesting, actually. Interesting? Hmm. Plasma is literally burning the outside layer of your ride home. Let's see how everyone fits inside. The commander of the Soyuz is always Russian. He has the middle seat. The co-pilot or flight engineer will be the foreign astronaut and he'll become commander on the ISS. But on Soyuz, he is the co-pilot and he sits in the left seat and he has to speak Russian to at least an upper intermediate level. And that's pretty good Russian right there. There can also be another flight engineer or a researcher sitting on the right. And if you're ever a space tourist, well, this is where you will sit. Wait a minute, do space tourists have to bother with Russian at all? Aha, uh -huh. well, I'll give you that answer right at the end. Just avoid the left seat, whatever you do. So it's most difficult for the guy in the left seat, especially approach and redocking with ISS. They are all manual procedures, so you can make a mistake and miss the docking system. You can. The whole time there's a transmission going and instructors and crew constantly comment on what they're doing in Russian. Moscow gives commands in Russian and the crew comments. That poor astronaut in the left seat must be able to communicate in Russian for the entire six hours of the ascent. That sounds pretty stressful to me. And they can't even use interpreters because it would take too long, especially because the further you get from Earth, the bigger the communication delay. Now, these are the kind of commands that Mission Control Center will give during docking, except they're in Russian and they're about 100 pages of it. By the way, you might have heard that in 2020, the US sent their own spacecraft up carrying two astronauts. So did they also have to learn Russian? Yep. Flying spaceships is complicated. It's technical. And so if NASA is saying, who are we going to pick to be astronauts? You want to pick someone who has proven their ability to learn complicated things. I guess that includes Russian, so it's all about aptitude, and if you get chosen, you report to the Johnson Space Center in Houston and go through about two years of basic astronaut training, which includes, yeah, you guessed it, you got it by now, Russian lessons. They start learning the language straight away and work at it every week as their schedule allows to keep up the practice. Many astronauts say that learning Russian is actually the hardest part of the whole experience. Anyone know where else they have to go? You probably don't know exactly. It's a pretty secret location. Anyway, astronauts arrive in Houston already highly motivated. There is no slacking off. They want to learn. They go into these simulators where they learn things like how to react to emergencies. And these days, communication in the simulators is only in Russian. So now when the test time comes, astronauts often answer in Russian in the exam, and they have to pass this test before they can go to the next place. Chocolatna planeta. Je putovi giovannino. Skoram poistje i snardo. I'm only kidding, that is not training. But she's pretty awesome at reading Russian, huh? The astronauts get Russian classes one-on-one -on -one with a Russian instructor, anything from one lesson every two weeks to three or four lessons a week. And the biggest thing they focus on in training is how to communicate, not how to write perfect Cyrillic letters and sentences, but how to understand the spoken language. And of course, the vocabulary is going to be different to what you'll learn in a story learning Russian course, because it's not just Russian, it's technical Russian. Space Russian includes obscure space hardware words and all kinds of weird space acronyms. It is all taken very seriously because if you're in space and there's an emergency and you're on the radio listening to some urgent discussion in Russian, you need to know what the heck is going on, especially in that fireball coming home. Of course, here at Story Learning, we prefer what Samantha's doing because we love stories. In fact, this whole channel is full of stories about language learning, but stories don't stop there because at Story Learning, I actually teach languages through story too. The reason is that stories are the best way I found to learn any language because stories are how we learn naturally. It's how we learned our first languages and we can use stories to learn a new language too, which is exactly how I teach. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, 
I've put together a completely free story learning kit that shows you how to learn languages using the amazing power of stories. That's right, even Russian. So if you're curious, check out the link below and claim your free story learning kit. Total, he spent about 50 weeks in the US for training, about 30 weeks in Russia, and about four to six weeks here in Europe, and about three weeks in Japan. Finally, it is immersion time. See, classroom instruction is only the first part. When you are assigned to a space flight, in the year before your space flight, NASA will send you to Moscow to stay with a family for total immersion in the language. How cool is that? It may only be for six or seven weeks, but it makes most people bump up their Russian quite a lot because they're picking up how ordinary people speak. And don't forget all the hours hanging out with cosmonauts. Another way you can train is to block two to three weeks to do an intensive Russian test where all you want to do beforehand is study Russian. I don't know, what would you choose? I'd choose the family thing myself. But this isn't the only reason that they have to go to Russia, or no. In a densely forested area near Moscow, there is a place that was once known only as Military Unit 26266. It used to be a secret training base for Soviet cosmonauts. Know what it's called now? Over the 1960s, they built the best space program in the world, at least for a while. It's known as Star City, and although we know where it is now, it's still kind of secretive. The only way you can go there is with a special permit that the Russian authorities approve. There's a rigorous training program to go through for the 11-day mission, starting with Russian classes. He'll also need a working knowledge of the space station. Star City is the only place to learn about the Russian modules, as well as being a great adventure for this new astronaut. Here in uh, Star City, I'm using most of my time in the Soyuz simulator together with my commander. Suddenly, it's starting to feel a lot more real, you know, when you're sitting in the Soyuz and you're really going through the whole launch and landing sequence. You can feel that you're, you're getting close to the date, and it's very, very exciting. Star City is Russia's cosmonaut training facility, and it was actually the very first training center designed specifically to send people into space. The American and other foreign, i.e. not Russian, astronauts will come here to learn more of the Russian language, but this time it's technical language, the, the, the special language of the astronauts. For the guy in the left seat, remember that guy? It's four hours a week. For the guy in the right seat, it's two hours a week. Where we've been in space for six months, and now we're going to fire the engines and come back to the Earth. It's one of our very first sims with all three of the uh, crew members of Expedition 35 on it. There's going to be a lot of malfunctions. It'll keep us busy all day. We're wearing our flight suits, and uh, it's kind of all the theory, all the preparation, all of the compulsories pay off, and today's the real deal. They're going to train on an actual spacecraft, a Soyuz, so that they can learn how all those Russian control buttons work, and also about the Russian segment of the ISS. And now things are getting real, because even the books are in Russian. I mean, there are translators around, but you don't want to be that guy asking for an interpreter in class, do you? So how are astronauts tested on their language skills? There's a standard language test that's used by the Foreign Affairs Department, and apparently it's good enough for astronauts. It's a verbal test where you can call the examiner on the phone and you can have a discussion with them. Sounds okay, right? If you pass a certain grade, you're good to go. But that is not all. When astronauts perform their exam tasks in the simulator, they are being watched by eagle eyes. Seriously, every command and every word you say is analyzed, scrutinized, because, you know, this time it is rocket science. So I, I had to do that. In terms of the actual training, mm. it was learning Russian. Uh, I came from a very technical scientific background, mm. and so I didn't really have a problem with those aspects. But languages were never my strong mm. point, so learning Russian was, a, was really quite hard. In the Soyuz spacecraft, only Russian is spoken. All the documentation is in Russian. Um, and on board the space station, I had to help my two Russian colleagues do a spacewalk. Many other astronauts say the same. Getting good in Russian was the toughest part of the training. NASA, if you're watching, this is why I wanted to talk to you, you see. We are keen to know what specific teaching methods you are using, because I've heard that learning Russian is quite fun if you do it the right way. After only being in the job for a matter of weeks, he announced that Russia would be saying goodbye to the ISS and starting its own space station. But according to him, this had nothing to do with politics. Okay, so a couple of things have already happened. The European Space Agency were going to launch a rover to Mars with Roscosmos, but now they ended that and Russia has stopped launches of its Soyuz spacecraft from one launch site 
in French Guyana, and apparently they have plans to launch their own space station by 2028. The plan is to operate it mostly without humans, with crews only visiting the station every few months to help out with experiments and maintenance tasks. If Russia eventually pulls this off, we will have three space stations orbiting the Earth. Meanwhile, China are competing to be the first to send a manned mission to Mars. So if you're training to become an astronaut, be grateful that for now, the space language is only Russian. So what happens next? Who knows? I certainly don't, but I want to hang out with this guy. This is major time to ground control And I'm floating in a most peculiar way What do you get when you cross Russian with English? What language are you going to use to communicate? Today we're going to use Ringlish. This is our unofficial language of the ISS program. It's called Ringlish. It's a blend of English and Russian. Did you get that? The unofficial language of ISS is Runglish, like Spanglish, just with Russian. I mean, space Russian. And as you can imagine, the language of the crew evolves based on who's up there, their nationalities, language levels, and so on. So each crew's version of Runglish, it's a strange word, isn't it? Is going to be whatever suits them. And who's going to argue with how you communicate when you're up in space? When you really do need the word, we do have uh, uh, electronic assist devices to help us get the, the precise word when you, when you can't have any ambiguity about what you're talking about. Quite cool. NASA has actually listed Runglish as one of the onboard languages. Only problem is... The Russian reporters in the morning asked me a question in Russian in front of all the media. And of course, I had to answer in Russian as well. And I know that she didn't understand what I said because I didn't understand what I said either. <laughs> it was a little bit embarrassing, but... Um, I guess I, uh, I, I've learned how to speak technical Russian and it still throws me a little bit when people speak conversational Russian. But for now, your own birding questions, Earthlings. What about space tourists? Must they learn Russian too? Well, according to Russia Beyond, space tourists do need a basic knowledge of the Russian language. That is right, you'll need about 250 hours of training, including some special terms. So if you want to leave the planet one day, best you get started. And I just happen to have a really awesome video about Russian right here to get you started. Mm -hmm.